What is up guys? Welcome to today's video. Hope you guys are all having a great week so far. It's currently Monday for me right now. Sorry, I have a couple people texting me. It's currently Monday, 2.15 in the afternoon. I am flying to Los Angeles tomorrow, so I'm actually pre-filming this video. I'm gonna edit it right after I film this and I'm gonna schedule it for Wednesday for you guys. Today's video is actually a very popular topic and it's something that I think will really help you guys out for those of you guys that are looking to invest in real estate, buy properties, or just buy a rental property. And that's talking about one, how I source my deals, how I find my deals, how I make sure that the numbers are gonna work so I can actually follow through and purchase the property. And I'm also gonna be talking about my goal for real estate and what I look for in each and every property in order for me to buy it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the third topic right here, and it's what I look for in real estate. A lot of you guys have probably already heard this term before, but my main focus when looking at real estate is cash on cash return. There's multiple things you guys can look for in real estate. There can be, maybe you guys are just looking for a certain dollar amount in cash flow each and every month and it doesn't really matter how much money you have invested you're just looking for a specific dollar amount in cash flow for more passive income uh, a lot of people do invest for strictly appreciation which I don't fully recommend, but uh, some states really like the cash flow is so low in some states that you're only really banking on properties to appreciate in the long run. And then for me, it's cash on cash return. Let's break that down really quickly before I jump into it because before you even start looking at properties, you wanna figure out your specific numbers before you even go and look. So then when you start looking at properties, you're like, yes, this is gonna work. No, this is not gonna work. And it's strictly a numbers game. You're not, you're not emotional about it. Because if you go and look at a property and you absolutely fall in love with it, and then you don't really know the numbers until after you like look at it, after you walk it and you're like, oh, this is not gonna be, this is not gonna work in my system or this is not gonna work for my cash on cash return. You already have that emotional connection to the property so it can kind of flaw your decision a little bit. So having a game plan going into looking for properties is very, very important. Cash on cash return. Let's say you have $50,000 that you want to invest in real estate. You're basically going to figure out what your annual cash flow is. You're gonna add that all up and you're gonna divide that by your initial investment on the property. The overall stock market, the cash on cash return for the stock market, I believe is like 9% annualized. So the way I see it is like, if I'm gonna invest in real estate, I generally want to beat out the stock market. Otherwise, your opportunity cost to put that $50,000 into the stock market might be better now there's a lot of other things a lot of other benefits besides cash on cash return in real estate so it's you can't directly relate it to uh, the stock market because you may be getting nine percent cash on cash return with your real estate every year and that'll equal out this general stock market but you're also getting appreciation on your property you're also getting your tenants to pay down your property each and every month so there's a lot of other benefits but if you can beat out the stock market on cash flow and on top of that you're getting your principal pay down you're getting your appreciation it's an incredible investment at the end of the day guys so uh, another reason why you want to invest in real estate could be you're trying to just diversify your portfolio you could be very heavy in the crypto market or the stock market and you're just trying to get uh, basically diversify your net worth a little bit so there's a lot of really good approaches to investing in real estate but now back to the topic on cash on cash return so when I look for properties my general rule of thumb unless I'm really banking on appreciation down the road I always try to get at least 10 to 12% cash on cash return. Now, different states are completely different. The Midwest, I wouldn't take anything less than 15 to 20% cash on cash return because the Midwest states are known for extremely high cash flow but not a lot of appreciation. So let's say your initial investment is $50,000. Let's keep it really simple and say I wanna make 10% cash on cash return. So you're gonna take your initial investment, whatever that may be, your down payment, if you're planning on fixing it up, maybe putting a couple grand into fixing it up, you wanna include all that in your cash on cash return. So let's say, I had a $45,000 down payment, $5,000 in renovations, and that's all in on this property. So 50,000 times 0.1 is $5,000. So if I want 10% cash on cash return each and every year, I have to make $5,000 a year on this property. We're gonna divide that by 12, and that means I my property that I'm purchasing has to make me $416 a month in order for me to achieve that 10% cash on cash return. So once you have this number in mind, it's actually very, very easy. And that's actually when we're gonna transfer over to my computer right now. So my camera's showing that it is actually overheating right now, which is extremely frustrating. But here is Zillow. Now, I right now, since I'm a real estate agent, I actually used to use Zillow for my first two rental properties I bought. But now that I'm an agent, I actually use the MLS 
but I wanted to hop on Zillow just because one, it's extremely user friendly, and two, anyone has access to it because I don't want to go in the MLS where majority of you guys aren't real estate agents and don't have access. So we're going to do it on here. We're just going to click on a random house. This one's kind of frozen right here. So we're actually going to click on this one because it's in the price range that I would be looking at. It's a 3-2. Uh, for rental properties, first of all, this is kind of uh, off topic, but I would always get uh, houses that have at least two bathrooms or if you wanted to spend the extra money and are willing to add another bathroom into it. Uh, three ones, four ones, I mean, I don't think there's five ones, which means there's five bedrooms and one bathroom, but anytime there's one bathroom, it's always, always more difficult to not only sell the house, but to rent it out as well because no one wants one uh, bathroom anymore. Back in the 60s, 70s, they used to actually build one bathrooms and it was quite common. So in the older houses, you will see that, but it is a lot harder to rent and you won't get rent comparable to a house that has two bathrooms, even though it may be a little bit bigger. So uh, first thing we wanna do here is look at the purchase price. Uh, I don't even know, it's probably gonna go, it's probably gonna go $400,000, but we're just gonna look at the purchase price of what it's listed at. Uh, $360,000, now let's say we are going to put 20% down on this property. You guys can likely put less if you guys are gonna live in the property and house hack it, that's a total possibility. But let's just say it's an investment property and you have to put down 20%. 360,000 times 0 0.2 is 72,000. 72,000 times 0.1. So our goal for this property right now is $7,200 a year. And you're gonna divide that by 12, which is $600 cash flow a month. So this is actually pretty difficult. 10% uh, in this kind of market is a little bit harder than when I was doing it a couple years ago because the housing prices have shot up. Um, but we're just gonna go with the flow on this one. So we have to make $600 a month on this property in order to hit our, our threshold of what we wanna hit here. So we have to figure out basically two things. We have to figure out what our rent is going to be. So we have to figure out what kind of uh, market rent there is around this area for a three bedroom, two bathroom house that's around 1800 square feet. And the second thing, we have to figure out what our expenses are gonna be. It's very simple at this point. You find out what rent's for and you find out what your expenses are and there has to be a $600 difference in there in order to get your 10% cash on cash return. So we're just gonna use, um, I normally don't do this. I will calculate it on my own. It's actually quite easy, but to keep this video going, uh, we're just gonna use the estimated payment calculator right here that Zillow has for us. So you guys can see right here, our estimated payment for this property is $1,608. We're gonna round down to $1,600. So we're just gonna do the reverse math on this. $1,600 plus $600 means this house has to rent for $2,200 a month in order to get what we wanna get out of this. So it's very simple from here. So we're trying to get rents of $2,200. And honestly, I, I know where this house is. Uh, it honestly may actually get $2,200 a month just because the rental market's kind of insane right now too. So um, once you guys have the property that you're looking at, this is where I wanna walk you guys through it. You guys, you, the main thing is you gotta figure out what market rent is. Cause the last thing you wanna do is get under contract on a property and then you realize that the rents that you sourced are completely off. So this is very important. So on Zillow specifically, you're gonna drop that, you're gonna click on this drop down menu. You're gonna go to houses for rent. This is very important. And what you're gonna do is you guys wanna write down all the numbers on the house that you're gonna buy, how many bedrooms it is, how big it is. So it had three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Uh, we are gonna narrow it down to only houses. Uh, if you guys get a condo with townhouses, you guys have to keep in mind, yes, it may be cheaper, but you, you most likely have an extremely high HOA. So we're just gonna narrow it down to houses because I don't wanna compare a single family detached residence to a condo because you're gonna get complete, completely different rents. So we're gonna narrow it down to houses. And then this is also very important as well. You guys wanna kind of get a rough estimate on the square feet because you're not gonna compare a thousand square foot house to your 1800, I think it was 1700 square foot house. So we're just gonna go a ballpark of plus or minus 350 square feet. If you guys needed to do more to get more options, you guys can definitely do that. But we're gonna do a $500 or 500 square foot difference right here. And then that's pretty much it. Days on Zillow doesn't really matter too much. Um, everything is pretty much gonna be the same. Lot size can come into play uh, when you're purchasing a property, but uh, on rentals, it doesn't matter too much. Someone's gonna rent it regardless of the lot size most likely, unless there's a huge discrepancy in it. So yeah, here's where we are. This house was actually right around here as well, if I remember correctly. So we're gonna go within 
like a mile radius ideally of this house. Uh, so let's just narrow it down right here. And right away, I can just notice like from some of these rents, this one's uh, listed for $2,800 a month. It's a slightly bigger than the one that we are gonna purchase. So that can be a good comp. We obviously have to make sure the condition of our property matches with some of these comps right here. Uh, so this has been listed for, th oh, excuse me, I'm kind of in the way on this, so oh, let me shrink myself a little bit here. Right there, I'm making myself smaller. So this house has been listed for 32 days, which is actually a little bit on the uh, longer end, uh, and it has only eight contacts. This is actually pretty low. So this, to me personally, is listed a little bit high. It's four bedrooms, so it is one bed bedroom bigger. It's just a bigger house in general, three bathrooms. Uh, so this, to me, I don't think it'll rent at $27.95. So let's click on this one up here. I'm just kind of clicking through some random some random ones right here. Uh, $2,400 a month. It's a 3-2. It's actually a little bit smaller than ours, which is good. So that'll give us a little bit of an upside here. It's only been listed for three days. It already has 10 contacts. So by this right here, I think this will probably end up going for $2,400. So this can actually be a very strong uh, rental comp for us. So let's actually look a little bit more into it. Another thing you want to look for is obviously you want to make sure the condition of the one you're comparing it to is relatively the same. Rentals, it doesn't matter too, too much because uh, at the end of the day, if you're if someone's going to put in an extra like $10,000 into the property, it's likely going to rent for the same as someone that maybe put $5,000 into it. These like extra touches to all these properties don't really add a whole lot of value to rentals. This is actually pretty standard. This is something, the condition that I would probably have my rental in where it's freshly painted, uh, not anything crazy. There's not any in crazy like granite or anything like that. looks like there's new cabinets. These countertops are actually relatively cheap. So yeah, I would say this is actually in pretty simple similar condition to the one that we're actually going to purchase, meaning this would be a very, very good rental comp for us at $2,400 a month. So what you want to do uh, is you just want to kind of like look through a bunch of these guys. Like you can look through one that's like under here. Let's look at this one for... I don't know, this one's for 1800 so this one is a little bit less than what we want for it, but if you look at it, days listed right here, it's been listed for zero days, it already has 53 contacts, which makes me think this is extremely undervalued right now, someone's gonna get a great deal for it. It's honestly probably had so much traction today, I think this might be a for sale by owner, oh no, uh, it's actually a management company. They're probably getting bombarded today, so they may actually raise the rent from what they listed it at. But even then, it's smaller than ours, same amount of bedrooms, same amount of bathrooms, $1,800 a month, but the condition of it, I mean, they can probably get $2,000 out of it. So what you wanna do is you wanna stay within like a little mile radius or even two mile radius, depending on where you're at in your city or your state. Sometimes there's not enough rental comps within that very small circle, so you wanna expand a little bit. But click click around, click around five or 10 properties and see what the average rent is, see how much traction they're getting on these properties. Uh, unfortunately on Zillow, you can't really look back to see what they actually truly rented for. But from my experience, a lot of the times, whatever they're listed for, most of the time you can tell by um, how many people have contacted them, what it's actually going to rent for so I would truly say let me expand myself a little bit I'm like talking in the small corner here so I would truly say after looking at some of these comps right here on the property that we just looked at that yeah you probably could end up getting twenty two hundred dollars a month on this based on the condition that's if this property sells for three hundred sixty thousand dollars if it goes up to four hundred thousand dollars we have to rerun all of our numbers once again here so that's a great way to do it guys uh, first step is figuring out what you want your cash on cash return to be. Some states, you're lucky to get 6%. The Midwest states like that, you're lucky to get, I mean, you're probably gonna get 16 to 20%. I wouldn't invest if it was less than that. Um, states like Arizona, 10 to 12% seems to be a really good cash on cash return. Once you know your cash on cash return, you want to find the actual property. You want to run the numbers on it. You want to make sure the rental comps in those in that area specifically will yield you the numbers that you want to get. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video. I hope you guys were able to enjoy this video. Comment down below if you guys have any questions whatsoever. If you guys are looking for an investment property here in the Arizona area, I specialize working with investment clients looking for cash flow producing rentals, just investment properties in general. So I love to work with you guys. 90% of my clients are investors. Please drop a like. I really appreciate it, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.